Now, about 10% of the UK adult population have this all the time. I'm talking about tinnitus, an involuntary sound inside your head, which is often described as permanent ringing in the ears. So that's 10% of adults in the UK with mild tinnitus. 1% actually have it so bad it affects their quality of life. So can you imagine life without ever being able to appreciate the sound of total silence? Josephine Swinho is a tinnitus expert. Morning. Good morning. Am I saying it right? Because I've heard it called tinnitus as well. In England, we tend to say tinnitus, the Americans tinnitus. Yeah. If you're interested, it comes from the Latin tenere, so choose your option. Oh, OK, and that means to ring, is that right? That's right, Check to ring. Check out my Latin knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just read the brief. <laughs> so <laughs> what is it, Josephine? You know, can you describe it for us? Tinnitus is, as you have said, it's a, a ringing or a buzz, buzzing or a whistling that appears to come from a person's ear but in fact emanates from the brain. So it's a complete illusion of sound. There isn't anything that makes that noise. It's the brain making the sound itself. So a noisy brain. Mm. Um, Who can get it? Anyone can get it. Um, Mostly it's in people who have some sort of hearing loss. So it tends to be more prevalent in people who are older. But children, young adults and the older population, we can all get it. And do we have any idea what causes it? Because, you know, if if it's one of those, you know, anomalies where we don't quite know why our brain's making a noise, that isn't going to help if you're one of the people who's got it, is it? No, it isn't. Well, it is becoming more common around neuroscientists that they believe tinnitus is as a result of changes in the brain activity when you lose some hearing. Um, So when you lose hearing, the brain that's responsible for processing that, uh, the auditory cortex, doesn't have any input anymore. And in fact, the brain creates phantom sounds, which is the tinnitus that people perceive. And, you know, how can it affect someone? Because I've heard stories of people, uh, you know... I, I focus quite a bit on silence there, but I've heard stories of people who listen to other noise to try and distract them from the noise of their tinnitus. Is that right? That's exactly correct. Tinnitus is really awful if you're living with it all the time. First of all, many people can't sleep. That can cause problems in having relationships. It can cause problems socialising and it can cause problems even holding down a job and it can cause terrible anxiety and depression. So current techniques for for helping people with techniques for um, with tinnitus sorry really focus around managing those symptoms of anxiety and depression Mm. how how do you know if you've got it i think you would know if you had it simply because of that sound in your ears and the the first thing that you should do if you think you have it is go to your gp there may be something very simple such as impacted earwax mm. and that could be removed and one hopes your tinnitus is going to, away, going to go away. But if it doesn't, then you can be referred on to an audiologist for some of those um, management therapies that we've talked about already. And I've talked about that 10% of adults have mild, 1% have it so bad it affects their quality of life. So there's obviously a range of of you know, of se- not seriousness, but suffering in a way, I suppose, a degree, isn't it? There is. I think what is very interesting about tinnitus is that it depends very much on the person's attitude to some extent and the um, introduction of other sounds, so noise pillows or white noise generators, can often help people because they're not focusing on the tinnitus sound. Mm. The first thing to do is try to relax and not try to hear your tinnitus louder or alternatively look out for some of the new treatments like acoustic neuromodulation which can actually deal with the cause of tinnitus rather than the symptoms. Hold on, acoustic neuromodulation sounds like something out of Star Trek. I know, it isn't really. A neuromodulation is a treatment that's around for other conditions but acoustic neuromodulation is a new treatment for tinnitus which is actually introduced to the ear through um, special earphones Right. and it's a series of tones that if you like attack the area of the brain that has that tinnitus tone that's making it up and helps the brain to relax and the tinnitus uh, becomes less in severity and even drops in tone. Over 2,000 people have been treated across Europe and 7 out of 10 of those people have experienced really significant reductions in their tinnitus. It's like a relaxation tape for your brain in a way. Well, I love that expression, yeah. but it is it is really good, high quality science and a cutting edge technique for tinnitus and 
the, the management therapies that are around cognitive behavioural therapy, the things that are available um, in the National Health Service today are excellent in managing the symptoms and have been around for 10 years or so. Mm. But I think with the number of people who are living with tinnitus today and really suffering from a poor quality of life, they do deserve better treatments and the tinnitus clinic are delighted that we're able to introduce this new one to the UK. Is there money spent on research into getting rid of it altogether? Yes, and the new neuromodulation treatment does help some people get rid of it altogether. There certainly isn't enough money spent on research into hearing disorders generally, and tinnitus is perhaps one of the areas where more money could be spent. The British Tinnitus Association are actually running a project at the moment which allows people to um, give some input into what they would like research um, around tinnitus to focus on. So if people are interested, either go on to the website www.thetinnitus clinic.co.uk or approach the British Tinnitus Association and see if you can help. Have you ever had it, Josephine? I have experienced it and it's a terrible thing. Um, I think the main thing I have found personally is to try not to focus on it, to keep active not to go into loud music environments without ear protection. You know, I love my music and uh, we were talking um, with friends recently about, you know, music concerts we'd been to and I really enjoyed a concert with the specials in yeah. Wolverhampton last <laughs> year. But, you know, I would not have gone into that loud environment without proper ear protection. Yeah. And people think it's going to damage, you know, the quality of your concert going experience. Um, but it doesn't because what these um, hearing devices do is actually allow the music to come through to you but takes out all that sort of cackle and loud Mm. noise in fact you can't hear the music and you certainly can't hear the words Mm, interesting oh so when's your next concert well (laughs) i was just saying to the guys i'm going to see pearl jam in the summer check you out you're a cool woman aren't you the specials and pearl jam yeah but just remember that classical musicians and i'm I'm a, a lover of classical music too you know they can really suffer from tinnitus sometimes those high-pitched instruments like the piccolo um, and loud organ music if you're too close to that you're still going to damage your hearing so very interesting josephine thank you very much josephine swinhoe there is a tinnitus expert if you want to find out more you can go on to the british tinnitus association website which is tinnitus.org.uk now it's one of those words that isn't very straightforward um t-i-n-n I-T-U-S, tinnitus.org.uk. And if you are someone listening this morning who has it and you can describe it to me, uh, then I would love to hear from you. 0845 303 1566, because it's obviously one of those conditions that, you know, unless you've been there, it's very difficult to understand how debilitating it could be.